Welcome back to Trending in Education. Mike Palmer here. Very happy to be joined by Professor Neil Heffernan from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, WPI. Neil, welcome to Trending in Education. Thank you for having me, Michael. Yeah, and uh, you have had a pretty storied uh, career that we're going to want to get a, a quick uh, rundown from you on in, in a second. But, uh, but the big thing that you've really made your mark with now is called assessments. And this today's show is going to be at least an introduction to, the, to that concept and an introduction to, to your work and what you're trying to do, some of the impact of the, the pandemic on your organization. And, but to get started, I'd love to just get a perspective from you on who you are and how you got to this point in your uh, career journey. Uh, sure. I've been studying human education and tutoring. I ran a tutoring program in high school, and I mm. wound up going into Teach for America, which is where I met Christina Heffernan, then named Christina Lindquist. I went and got my PhD in computer science, uh, and I videotaped my then, uh, she wasn't my even fiance yet, but I started studying human tutors and then trying to make computers act like her. I actually, my dissertation was called Miss Lindquist after her because I Okay. strategies she did, yeah. kind of replicated them with the computers. And I've basically been doing the same thing for the last 20 years, which yeah. is figuring out how to use technology to automate some of the very easy, simple stuff so that teachers have time to, to do the more difficult stuff. Computers yeah. are good at, no, that's not right. And here's maybe a message. Actually. Yeah. But motivating kids is what, like, as a professor at Worcester Polytechnic Institute in artificial intelligence, I, the fun part of my job is all the one-on-one -on -one interactions with students. And that's what we try to figure out how to give teachers more time to do. Yeah, that's awesome. And I imagine there might be a screenplay in uh, your design of that tutor based on your uh, future wife. That's got, <laughs> so, it's got some Hollywood undertones. I, I, could, uh, I, could, I could already envision it. So we'll follow up on that separately. But, uh, but yeah, and then assessments are what these things are called now. And the organization that you founded. Can you talk a little more about your organization and what it's doing? And, and what sure. It's doing? So, sure. So I, right. So for the last 20 odd years as a faculty member, maybe 19 years, I have been funded mostly through the National Science Foundation and U.S. Department of Education, though with some more, particularly more recently philanthropic support. Eric Schmidt Foundation named Schmidt Futures helped us launch this nonprofit, I think a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. that is mission focused on delivering assistance to, I think at last count last year, I think there was 300,000 students that were using it as part of their class. So mm, that wow. means about 10,000 teachers, yeah. eight accounts and give out and give out assignments. And my wife, Christina Heffernan is the executive director of that. And we work together. I'm more on the research development side mm -hmm. and she's more on like, how do we help normal teachers use yeah. this technology in normalish ways? And while, while I teach artificial intelligence, I'm sure this will come out during this talk that I don't really believe in artificial intelligence inside of our platforms. I run, I, when I talk to real teachers, I talk about, we have a really dumb, simple platform that teachers draw questions from or write their own questions and assign them. And so it's mostly about immediate feedback on questions that teachers want to assign. So, we, we have some little bits of stuff that's cool, or you might call artificial intelligence, where we yeah. try to figure out how to be slightly smarter, or I like to say, slightly less dumb educational software. <laughs> that's good. That's uh, appropriate humility. It's very much uh, refreshing these days when folks talk about AI. But, uh, but I think the idea, though, too, and we were talking about this a little bit while, while prepping, I've talked a bunch about the concept of the centaur from chess where a human paired with AI can outperform uh, a human alone or AI alone. And I did think of that when I was ramping up a little bit on assessments. Can you talk about how the teacher and the, the application, the teacher and the tool work together? Some examples maybe about how it can be used effectively? Yeah, like the easiest thing. So like I met my wife teaching in Baltimore City. I was a Teach for America teacher and she was a return Peace Corps volunteer. And I would start every class with actually like, here are the answers on last night's homework. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never would be able to know ahead of time, hey, which questions were really hard? What were the common wrong answers? And so the first thing we did with assessments is just make that really easy. And so teachers, the first five minutes of class is teachers already know 
going in, which questions they want to go over, yeah. which were the common wrong answers so they can use their time actually effectively. They don't stop going over our homework. They still talk about what was hard because if lots of kids made the same error, the, my computer software isn't magic. It's still, <laughs> the, you should still want to talk about that. If half yeah. the kids in the class said three X plus five, uh, it's really great to have someone explain, hey, why did so many of you say three X plus five? And then right. someone says, oh, I know what they did. Actually, they failed to multiply the coefficient of the second term, mm -hmm. which is something that as a middle school math teacher, yeah. I would wander around my class saying, yep. it looks like you failed to multiply the coefficient of the second yeah. term. Right. Uh, just to, just to be clear, this is a hypothetical because I always nailed my coefficients in the second term. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Did you also distribute the negative side? Did oh my God, don't get me started on that. I still, <laughs> I'm still working through some of my, my eighth grade math scenarios. But, but yeah, no, it's because uh, I, I do think that as we were talking, it's also the, the human connection that you get with the teacher is something that it's going to take a, a really long time, if ever, for AI to replace that and the, the motivational side of all of this and the, just the, the connection with a, a human who you trust, an elder who's not your parents, who cares about your ability to learn this stuff, it, we're wired for that. And, and I know I was just, I thought that was an interesting because we were talking about it before. I, could, could you just expand on that a little bit? I think the important thing that teachers do is set goals and expectations and mm -hmm. ask kids to do stuff. Yeah. Like, MOOCs have made lectures really easy, accessible, but that doesn't mean everyone now knows all their algebra. It is right, right. Like the important thing, as far as I'm concerned, what teachers do is try to help kids push themselves yeah. and hopefully mostly achieve. And they also have a accountability job. But mm -hmm. anyways, I'm trying to figure out how to lighten a little bit of the load because clearly as a math teacher, I would have loved to have had assistance in my own classroom because I would have just made going over homework like smarter uh, yeah and uh, which is why i was teaching in baltimore and i was doing this thing called assessments all on paper before i mm. started mm -hmm. i was a middle school math teacher my second year yeah i would have i i would demand mastery learning of my children because i knew everyone can learn algebra mm -hmm. uh and there was something at the time called the maryland functional math test and so i would give a little test at the beginning of the year before my algebra class and then there's like and it was a very basic test. I could always count like item 18 would be a fraction divided by a, a whole number divided by a fraction less than one. And, and you of course need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide whole numbers, fractions, decimals, and percents yeah, yeah, yeah. algebra. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I was doing, I was doing mastery learning, but like every day after class, like the kids that didn't know that skill, they would come to me and they couldn't go home until they were done mastering this. Yeah. Everyone can learn how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, whole numbers, fractions, decimals, percents. As you can tell, I said that really fast. Cause yeah. I, those are the 31 skills on the Maryland functional math test. At yeah, the time. yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but I was making all these questions by hand and I knew we can make computers do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, Cause you have a combination of the computers are doing it and it's also a crowdsourcing model as well. So can you expand on that a little as well? Sure. When we first got going, we were making all of the content. We started by taking all the state here in Massachusetts, it's called the MCAS, the Massachusetts Assessment Comprehensive System or whatever it is called. And, but we got going by just taking all the state items and putting them online. And then we would go get teachers to ask these, in this case it was math teachers in the math department heads in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I remember asking Paul King, hey, on this question, 90% of your children in May got this wrong. Mm -hmm. What do you want to have the computer say? And, he's, and he was like, Real, that was really easy for him to say. He was like, yeah. first I want to ask a question about the congruence. Then I want to ask a question about the perimeter. Then I want mm -hmm. to ask a question about the equation solving. And then finally, I want to ask a question about the substitution back yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, and so we come back to him one week later uh, and he's, oh, it's all there? Like it works? And I'm yeah. like, yeah. I think our main idea was making infrastructure that made it easy for us to break problems down into steps and to give mm -hmm. feedback then makes it easy for teachers to express what they're already good at, how to break mm -hmm. things down, how mm -hmm. to give messages to kids. And so I think I've learned over time, like all of our projects really all start with Let's just get teachers involved. And so we get teachers to do stuff, either answer common questions or mm -hmm. write feedback for common wrong answers, or even give us new questions. Mm -hmm. And then 
And then we try to do a little bit of machine learning to try to automate some of that process. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was cool as I was ramping on this, it reminded me a little bit of Wikipedia. You have some of the, the dynamics of a pro-social effort. People are trying to help each other. You're a not-for-profit, right? Is that yep. the- yes, yeah, yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. We're totally and free. Mission-based, you know, with philanthropic dollars behind you. It's just, it is something that, well, we really have to work on that screenplay, uh, Neil. It's got, it's, it's, got a, it's got a slam dunk written all over it, but- um, I, yeah. I, I will say that we are like Wikipedia, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that we are crowdsourcing. I'm pulling out from underneath my computer monitor, not that your listeners are going to see this, mm -hmm. but I've pulled the Encyclopedia Britannica ah. out from underneath my thing. Yeah. And it's a position was, of honor. It's, it's underneath your webcam. Yeah. I was dumb enough to actually ah. do a wedding registry for Encyclopedia Britannica. So wow. Like, wow. you might think like I'm actually a smart guy, maybe paying attention to trends, but I didn't see Wikipedia coming. Yeah. Like I did not see that. Like, in fact, I went, I did a wedding registry for an encyclopedia like, yeah. like, in like two years. It's like, cool. You have it. And it's holding up your camera beautifully. You know? <laughs> I like, but I definitely think there is someone is going to do something big that is like Wikipedia, but not for encyclopedia entries, but for all the stuff or Lots of the boring stuff that teachers have to do, giving out feedback, yeah. actually asking new yeah. questions. Grading um, papers, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, like, well, my wife and I will die trying doing this. And maybe someone will figure out how to do it even slicker than us. Yeah. Uh, but that's what we're all about. Yeah, yeah. And the, the challenge, and we talked a little bit about it, is that it's not an either or, this gets back to the idea of, of the centaur too. Like you develop these things, I think frequently, Obviously, these days, te just to empathize with teachers, you are you are a professor. But like it is a very fraught time to be teaching. Not everyone is as well equipped to shift into digital. They might be dealing with health or other family. Not to mention Black Lives Matter. It's just a crazy year. But but it does seem like technology can be assistive and beneficial to teachers. So that even if they need more time to be more emotionally present which is really important this year in particular. Everyone's struggling with this stuff. I joke a lot about the robot overlords. Like, it's not going to be like that. Like, that just doesn't, I know we both agree on that, but I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about this. I, the, so I, I'm looking on my screen at the number of comments that teachers wrote to open-ended questions just before the pandemic. So in February, 7,000 messages went out from uh, teachers, where a teacher saw a child's open response question, and an open response question in the context of mathematics might be, hey, please explain why. In mathematics, they're not writing huge essays, but right. teachers want kids to be able to explain why, mm -hmm. not just, I'm glad the answer is 27, but right, actually right, why. Right. Mm -hmm. Two months later, we are at 117,000. Like wow. Teachers feel yeah. the need to emotionally connect at mm -hmm. least in this context, we provide them a platform to essentially send a text message that kind of is like, Michael, I'm really yeah. glad that you got, like your response here was really good. Or maybe, right. or, or maybe it might be, Michael, I'm really sad you asked. Yeah. It's not you like you. Yeah. IDK, and <laughs> that's not good enough, Michael. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I feel like one of the things we were just pitching in a grant last week was to make it even easier for teachers to even make little either video or audio clips that are just seconds long because yeah. I feel like text, I don't think text cuts it. Anyways, I kind of know that we need to help these teachers on all the social emotional connections. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, some, the paper we're going to talk about today that I think maybe got me invited to your show was we, for the two most commonly used middle school math curriculums, Engage New York, otherwise known as Eureka Math and Illustrious Mathematics, otherwise known as actually Open Up Resources. We crowdsource basically uh, multiple different teacher created hint messages for every question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and so those messages, those little explanations and hint messages, I think can be powerful. In fact, we showed they're really useful, yeah. um, but that's not the same as, I don't know, all the social emotional stuff yeah. that teachers do to keep the kid going. So, so, uh, so it's been wonderful getting your time. I really appreciate the work that you and your team and uh, you and your wife are doing, which, which is probably uh, worth spending more time on maybe on another podcast because it's impressive that the two of you have been able to grow this thing together. Real quickly, any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. So 
it, it, it is an unusual situation actually because she walked into my middle school math classroom in Baltimore and yeah. we've been together ever since and she helps tame some of our ideas that we, we have lots of ideas. I have lots of ideas and, yeah, yeah. and she helps throw away the ones that aren't very good. <laughs> and, and keep the good ones, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah. The, so we've been very fortunate because yeah, we yeah, have, yeah, yeah. And it's not another show, I think it's another podcast, but we, we, we may want to get into that another time too. Lots, lots to talk about partnerships working together. But, but the other thing that, that I did want to make sure we touched on uh, before you go is that whenever I have a guest on, I love to ask them. Uh, what's capturing your imagination right now? What trends are emerging in the world around you? Uh, it could be very much related to what you're doing. It could be stuff outside of what you're doing. But, uh, but what something that we haven't talked about yeah. so far that's really capturing your imagination that you think is worth worth noting for our listeners? Well, I know what I just wrote a four million dollar grant on and submitted last week was to I find Zoom breakout rooms very difficult to deal with. We have mm -hmm. millions of kids now in in on Zoom or in Google Hangout or Google yeah. Meet. And I was just proposing, what can we do to help XD teachers pay attention to what's happening inside these Zoom breakout rooms? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was proposing to add speech to text so that teachers can see in real time what's getting talked about in each breakout room so they can yeah. figure out who, which breakout room to go into. And when I go into a breakout room, they all are like, oh, hi, Dr. Efferton. Uh, yeah. And I have no yeah, idea yeah. what they were just talking about. Right. And what we need to figure out like the Zoom technology is interesting, but it was like optimized for business meetings, not yeah. for classroom teachers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and us classroom teachers are used to being able to listen to three different groups yeah. all at the same time and yeah, kind of yeah. deciding which one to go talk to. Mm -hmm. And we need to enable that technology. And, and, uh, and so I'm excited to do that and then to help teachers notice which kids are participating well and which kids are not participating well. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, that maybe we could do stuff like, hey, you probably want to send Michael a little note saying, yeah. Michael, you didn't talk at all right, in right, the three right. breakout rooms. Or yeah, maybe, yeah. Michael, you talked too much at 50% yeah, yeah. of the <laughs> well, airtime. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe that would be a good use of technology to support teachers in doing tasks that they otherwise would do in a normal way that mm. in, in, in real classrooms they can they, Maybe some of that they can pay attention to. They yeah. still might have a hard time knowing who's really not talking Right. Their, uh, but you at least you at least start to get a you get better window into the behavior at least and that can begin a conversation. And getting back to your previous point, you don't know why they're not chatting and maybe there are other problems in their life that might be keeping them from doing it. Maybe it may not be who who knows, but it can at least flag the kid who really needs that that human connection the most. And that's why I do think there is some really effective blending of this technology with with the human powered human mediated teaching piece that was good that was probably one the wife would have would have allowed through she, she didn't beat to that one so <laughs> she says this is the best idea i had all year she doesn't normally like most of my new ideas wow that's saying like something many new ideas yeah yeah she's like you should keep working on that dude. nice good job by you <laughs> any closing thoughts neil it's wonderful having you on uh, would i love to leave the door open to have you back on again in the future oh. this this work is uh, super relevant and for as a show looking for trends and learning uh, things that people need to keep an eye on uh it's called assessments where should people go again if they wanted to track this stuff down yeah right so assessments.org is where they can find out about it and that's the six the first six letters are blending the word assistance and and the last four are assessments thus mm -hmm. assessments.org mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and ho hopefully many of your listeners might see value in in what we give away for free yeah awesome uh thank you very much dr neil he heffernan from wpi and the assessments foundation really fascinating work you're doing and thanks for listening uh for those of you out there we'll be back again soon on trending in education mm -hmm.